All right, we'll get started in a sec. Yep, no worries. So is there like a text chat um, that's, that is in this room? I don't know how to... Yeah, understand. remember we were um, sending data, um, if I'm not mistaken, we were going into general chat to post studies or whatnot, I think. Right. I know we were sending messages back and forth, but I thought those were private. I thought those oh, were we are, Yeah, we are. That is private. Um, so oh, okay. There's private DMs, and then there's also yeah. um, a text chat in the this server. Right. Um, hmm. Why? Well, what's, the, what's the deal? Oh, I was just wondering. I can't seem to bring it. Is it... Op like, how would I open that up at the moment? Oh, sure. So... Um, you scroll down and you see open text channels. Uh, yeah, one second. Um, ah, oh, yes, open text that channels. Just general. Ah, uh, right, okay, cool. Yeah, got it. Uh, so I'm just checking to see if there's any recorders available. If it's not, it's fine. We could just have an unrecorded conversation. Um, yeah. Let me see, I think. Uh... Okay, I mean, that's fine. We'll start soon. Yep, yep. <clears throat> All right. So, <clears throat> so last, since last time we uh, reviewed some data and... Um, uh -huh. uh, yeah, and we, we found, like, maybe not perfect examples of the phenotype that you were suggesting. Um, yep. But seemingly close, closer than we found before to the phenotype you were suggesting. I mean, I'm not aware of a perfect mm -hmm. example of this phenotype, but I am aware of major structures of both the malarian and wolfian duct um, simultaneously developing and various mechanisms for which that can happen, um, such that um, you have, not, if not ipsilateral, but also, but also bilateral. Um, what, is and, 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 what does ipsilateral yeah. mean? Oh, sure. So ipsilateral means um, on. So ipsilateral means on the same side. Um, contralateral means on the opposite side. So, for example, let's say um, let's say we have two ovaries and two testes. So let's say so we have two right ovaries and two right testes. And we have two left ovaries and two left testes. Okay. Ipsilateral. So the left testy has, if I say, is the right ovary ipsilateral or contralateral to the right testy? Um, the right testy would be ipsilateral to the right ovary. Uh -huh. and it would be contralateral to the left ovary. So right. contralateral just means on different sides instead of left yep. versus right. And ipsilateral means on the same side. Sure. So... I there are different ways in which you can have um, both the Wolfian and Malarian duct um, development developing in the same organism at the same time. One way yeah. is it could be a contralateral development. So we all are in the normal situation. We all start with two bipotential gonads. They right. can undergo the Wolfian or the Malarian process. Mm -hmm. However, it is possible that one of them undergoes the Wolfian process and another one undergoes the Malarian process. So in that case, you will have a right-sided Wolfian process and a left-sided Malarian process. Right. Another way. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Another yep. way. It what, 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 um, what species does, did, you, did you find that in? Uh, that was found in mice and it was found in rabbits. Actually, right. it's found in mice. Mice can, can have it. Rabbits, you can have it on both sides. And in right. whales, you can have it on both sides. So but another, so another way you can have it... Also, oh, and humans as well. Humans, uh, humans have mm -hmm. been found to have uh, contralateral. Right. Um, in another way you can have simultaneous development of the Wolfian and Malarian uh, processes is if it's um, ipsilateral, which means that the... Wolfian and Malarian process has simultaneously developed on the same side. 
rather than opposite sides. Okay. And a form of ipsilateral development would be bilateral development of both processes. So you have two in which you will end up with four bipotential gonads. Well, four, four, two developing. No, you would end up yeah, four, four gonads or four Yeah, four, four bipotential gonads. So the, so the hypothesis is that there's duplication of the uh, bipotential gonads. Oh, and that's how they're so, getting the double ups. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. And then, but that's yeah. not the only requirement. So, so the first thing that happens is there's two bipotential gonads. They duplicate to four bipotential gonads, mm -hmm. and then there is a, a lack of response to the counter inhibitory substances. Mm -hmm. So, testes differential d TDF testes differentiating factor doesn't respond. Do doesn't influence the the female structures to inhibit them mm -hmm. uh, like it normally would. And so, if yeah. the, all those things are in place, you can get both malarian and uh, wolfian processes developed not just it not just contralaterally but also ipsilaterally laterally and even bilaterally right right okay yeah. hey. um okay. that's uh yeah interesting uh to know and um i think uh yeah i don't know it's been a good a good discussion because i haven't had a lot of um yeah, one-on-ones with people who are kind of coming at it from the other side to really like work out where um my uh lacking of lack of understanding is around different issues um so i guess um when i've been like yeah since we talked last um i have been going over uh the little um twitter thread that you uh wrote out that kind of explained your um, yeah, your position, which, uh, admittedly I hadn't, I think I kind of glanced at it, but I hadn't properly, um, looked at it prior to our first discussion. Um, and did you so, also go over, sorry, to stop, did you also go over my responses to, um, uh, individuals such as swipe, right. Um, and, uh, all, let's see, I don't know if you're familiar with them. Right. right. No, I, I didn't. I, it was just the, it was just the Twitter thread. Okay. Um, which I, I think was about seven or eight posts. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. And so I went over those, and um, what I think the issue is, is that um, that it's like a, it's a categorization issue. Um, and so, first of all... Um, the way that I would exp the thing that I think is most uh, crucial to the discussion is the difference between capacity and function. Um, so, uh, where are we? I would say that um, it's possible for something to have uh, the capacity to perform something that's outside its function. So the example I was thinking of was, you know, uh, in prison, lots of toothbrushes get made into shanks, but the purpose of a toothbrush isn't to stab someone, but it can be, it has the capacity to be used in that way. Um, well, wait a minute. Um, uh, when we, when I asked you what makes, what's the sufficiency criteria for male sex and sufficiency criteria for female sex, you didn't say anything about purpose. You gave a, you, the definition you gave me was, that there is a phenotype organized around um, making a given gamete cell. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to change your definition? I mean, you can if it's what you want. You can change your definition. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that definition was actually um, incorrect mm -hmm. because, because I don't think that uh, purely having the capacity to produce... Um, uh, these gametes changes what sex they are because uh, yeah, project, uh, the capacity okay, so to we can go these, back these to... Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. I just want to finish this. Um, uh, the so, um, it doesn't change the capa It doesn't change the uh the capacity to produce different phenotypes. Doesn't change the sex of the phenotype because all phenotypes have the capacity to produce all gametes. So that would mean there were no sexed phenotypes. Um, well, I'm not sure if that's 
true or not. I'm agnostic on that, um, especially after they've been differentiated. Um, but but that's okay. We can go. Uh, but hang on, no, no, no. But what isn't the whole point of um, him, like trying to um, like look at the various different examples of hermaphroditic uh, or like uh, what do they call it? Um, true hermaphroditism. Anisogamous hermaphroditism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think part of the way to get to understand the difference is um, by looking at, um, yeah, what scientists mean by true, uh, <laughs> true hermaphroditism. Well, can I just explain mean- my, what, what, what I mean when I say I'm not sure if it's possible for any being to... Um, okay, to yep. Any- yeah, sure. Yep. So all the so I'm agnostic on that. The reason I'm agnostic on that is because um, not just we haven't seen any example. We haven't seen any example that has gotten close to that in a given population. So for example, all the examples we have on true simultaneous anisogamous hermaphrodites, the potential for for that happens early on in development. So it's if we, I give you an example of adults, like if I took myself for an example and I asked mm-hmm. the question. You know, is it physically possible for me to produce eggs, right? Mm. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I I don't see why it wouldn't, but I don't, it's not, it wouldn't be analogous to a case where if I asked myself, if I, as I was developing, you know, as a fertilized zygote, right? Mm -hmm. Is it possible for me to produce both eggs and sperm? That would be a very different question. And I think the answer to that would be yes, if I was a zygote, and it would be much more agnostic if you're asking it to the adult me, because all the examples where we have... Oh, yeah, sure, sure, but in, in, in any given example, um, there will be phenotypes that can and can't, at least at the given moment, produce one or the other gametes. But yeah, the question um, is, could they produce As, as a class, as a, Sorry? The question, but the question would be that if any given phenotype can produce both. Right, right, right. Yes, um, but any given, like, not ex- not any given example of a phenotype, but any given class of phenotype can mm. produce. What, what do you so, mean? So, well, you can find, um, like, you can find uh, male gonads inside a female phenotype, and you can find female gonads inside a male phenotype. Well, that, that's that's fine. I, so, what what would be your? Let, let's just get to the bottom of it. So, what would be your criteria for male sex and your criteria for female sex? Like, what definition are you putting on the table? Sure, sure. I guess what I would put on the table is that um, something becomes sexed, whether that's a gamete or a gonad or a phenotype, it becomes sexed when it is organized specifically around uh, a specific gamete. So um, male phenotypes are male because they're organized around uh, the male fe- the male gamete, and female phenotypes are female because they're organized around the female uh, phenotype. But uh, hermaphroditic phenotypes, not not sex phenotypes that have hermaphroditic traits, but true hermaphroditic phenotypes that develop both male and female genitalia simultaneously. So you have the same gonads in the same phenotype. That means the phenotype doesn't have a sex category, and it works in the same way that, um, for example, a T-shirt has both left and right sleeves, but you wouldn't say it's a left and right T-shirt because they kind of cancel each other out. However, in items that function exclusively in relation to one side of the body, uh, not only do these, like, say, um, left shoes or a right glove, not only do these contain components that can be described as left or right, but the entire item of clothing is described as left or right. So my argument would be that male is something that only produces sperm, and female is something that only produces ovum. And rather than meeting both categories, a hermaphrodite is actually ex- a hermaphrodite on the level of a phenotype is actually excluded from either category, even though they contain gonads that are male and female. Okay, so you would say that um, 
all of the peer-reviewed literature that says true anisogamous hermaphrodites are male and female, that that's just incorrect. Is that what you would say? Uh, yeah, I guess I'd have to see exactly what they're saying. Yeah, they're sure, saying, I can. I, can post they, I mean, they can say the they can say the gonads are male and female, but to no, they're say saying the they, organism, the organism is both male and female. Right. Yeah. Well, my understanding, actually, another thing too is I think that the uh, understanding of male and female, um, I think they're mutually exclusive. Um, I actually do think it's like um, logically. No, you, you can you can define it that. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. understand. I understand what you're saying. So you can mm -hmm. you can have a definition mm -hmm. that it is like um, that. There, it's mutually exclusive to be uh, male, male and female, just mutually exclusive categories, which means that. Um, if being male, so we have a definite, we have a categorization schema such that male only is, is what makes an individual male. So in other words, sperm pr organization around production of sperm only is sufficient to create criteria for being male. Organization uh, around eggs only is a sufficient mm -hmm. criteria for being female. <clears throat> and if an individual is for a phenotype to be, For a phenotype to be classed as female. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. And yeah. for a fe and for an organism to be um, organized around both sperm and egg production, they simply are sexless. The phenotype has no sex. Yeah, the organism. The organism has no sex. Yes. Yes. Okay. No. 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 Uh, yeah. Is the organism the phenotype? Um, um, the organism has a phenotype. Um, the organism. Is it yeah. Maybe the organism has a sex, but the phenotype doesn't, or something. <laughs> well, that you have to explain to me. How do you work that one out? <laughs> that... Yeah, um, because the phenotype is a category. Um, okay, how would the how would the organism have a sex without phenotype having a sex? Um, yeah, no, uh, it doesn't have a yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to stick by it doesn't have a sex. Okay, so the organism... <laughs> okay, cool. So the organism, yeah. on your view, does not have a sex, despite the fact that it can sexually reproduce. Yes. Is that right? Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. So, you can have a definition like that. It can be... It's not going to entail a contradiction. Mm -hmm. um, the reductios on that definition will be the following. Mm -hmm. um, number one, the, what I just mentioned. So in what you are going to say the organism doesn't have a sex category, despite the fact that it can sexually reproduce, despite mm -hmm. the fact that it's organized around um, sexual reproduction, modalities mm -hmm. of sexual reproduction. Mm -hmm. The other issue is it's at odds with the, bi the biologist's understanding of what it means uh, of their categorization. So I can present multiple peer reviewed papers uh, stating and affirming that the organism, organisms that have a true simultaneous anisogamous hermaphrodism are both male and female. Um, so you can, it's, it's a proprietary definition. You can have that definition. Um, mm. Well, I don't know. Yeah. The dictionary definition that I've been going off of is, um, and I, obviously this is the dictionary definition. It's not the, um, like, uh, a scientific definition, but it's more like a lay definition, um, is that uh the actual definition has baked into it the fact that there's only two categories so it says either of the two main categories and then specifically in brackets male and female into which humans and most other living things are divided on the basis of their reproductive function um so it's kind of saying in that definition that a sex is uh, binary and exclusive because they're saying either of the two main categories. Yeah, no, you can have a definition like that. Uh, again, like right. you, can, you can have that definition. The reductios on that definition are the following. Uh, first, yeah. and, first and foremost, that's um, contrary to the definition that scientists are using, that biologists are using. And but is that a reduct? Is that a reductio well, would, or is well, that, that just so that wouldn't be the reductio? Actually, sorry, the reductio yeah. for that would be specifically that you would be saying that an organism can. Uh, be organized around uh, sex, uh, re sexual reproduction, and yet they don't have a sex category. To me, that's the that's the hilarious reductio on that view. Yeah, um, because they're in all they're in all of the categories, so they don't have a specific well, being, sexual function. Well, wait a minute. Being in all of the categories doesn't follow. It doesn't follow that they're not in any of the categories. 
all just means none. <laughs> we're, um, we're in the backwards yeah. world. Yeah, so, I mean, the problem with that is the, that the fact that we're meeting two categories doesn't mean that we're meeting no category. It just means that we're meeting both categories. It seems like we'd meet both No, categories. no, no, because, because they, cancel, they cancel each other out like the left and right sleeve. Wait. Look, so if, if I have a shirt that has a left-only sleeve, and if I have a shirt that has a right-only sleeve, and if I have... Uh -huh a shirt that has a left and right sleeve how many with respect if i ask the question with respect to how many um how many uh, um possible shirts there are or how many um right right yes yes how many possible shirts there are there are three possible shirts but there are only two possible like shirts that are defined by the uh number of sleeves they have the other one isn't defined in that way so there are two possible there are two possible sexed phenotypes, but there is one unsexed phenotype. Right, so if I ask the question, um, the shirt has a given number of arm types that it is organized to fit. So we have <laughs> yeah. Then there would be three yeah, arm types, and only two of them would be de definitional. Yeah, so there would be biases. three. There would be three. Yeah, it would be it would be ternary. It would be. It would be would not be binary. If so, there would be a, a shirt that's organized around fitting a left arm. There would be a shirt that's organized around fitting a right arm, and then there would be a shirt that's organized around fitting a left arm and a right arm, and then we would have a non-binary category. Right, and and the first two arms would be sex. The first two arms would have a specific arm category, and the third the third combination would have no armed category. Um, it's, the um, it's the same way, way. There, are, there, there are only two possibilities for the number of sexes that a phenotype can belong to uh, because anything that includes more than one sex by definition has no exclusive reproductive function. It's, Wait, not, it's, it's not exclusively that... organized around one of the gametes. Well, I, so agree it's not, I agree it's not exclusively organized around one of the gametes, and I agree you could have a mm -hmm. parent. Um, definition like that. The reductio for that is, though, the the reductio for having a definition. Um, the reductio for for saying that the definition. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, this what I'm saying. The reductio is is that it's just to say that there is an organism that does not have a sex, yet mm -hmm. they can pr they can engage in sexual reproduction, and they're organized. Yeah, it's, a, it's, called it's called a hermaphrodite. It's called a hermaphrodite. No, I, I understand that. I I, mm -hmm. I I understand that. But the reduct the reductio is simply that a organism can be organized around sexual reproduction, and yet they don't have a sex category. Despite yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. possible. Yeah, that's 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 no. I understand you re reaffirming the the view. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's to, to me that's an insane view. And if you go back to the shirt example. Mm -hmm. The fact that a shirt has a can be organized around fitting a left and right arm, that doesn't cancel out the categorization schema of the of what arms the shirt can meet. It doesn't mean yes. there. It doesn't mean. Well, let me finish. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that the shirt is or organized around meeting no arms. It doesn't mean that the shirt is organized around fitting no arms. It means that they're organized around both arms. And the fact that it's organized around left and right arm doesn't mean that. It somehow cancels it out, and now the shirt is organized around meeting no arms. It's just a no. Story. It's 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 that the shirt isn't organized around meeting a specific arm, and then mm -hmm. as by definition, it doesn't have a definition as belonging to one side or the other. That's fine. Now I understand. Like I'm not disagreeing that you can have a an organization schema or a category schema that doesn't. Uh, but you were saying that. that you were. But you were saying that the presence of like that my position in. Well, you Somehow. had a different okay. definition before. Okay. Your previous definition did actually entail a contradiction. Right. Now I'm saying your definition may not entail a contradiction. It just entails hilarious reduc reductios and is at odds with the scientific consensus. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with that. With <laughs> okay. So just so we're just so we're we're clear. Um, a shirt that is um, so just so. <laughs> 
So let me, uh, so just so we're clear, so a sex, an organism that is organized around more than one type of sexual reproduction is sexless. So we, we agree mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. has, okay. has no sex, has no sex category. Yeah, which means, to, which means it's sexless. Uh, I don't know if it does. Well, if I, it, if it, I sex because I think there are things without sex categories like a rock, and there are things without sex categories like a hermaphrodite, and one of those has a sexual function and the other one doesn't. I agree. But, just because all, but, but by sexless, I just mean that they don't have any sex category. Like, for example, if I say okay, that for yeah, any category, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for any category, so if I say it's numberless, I mean it doesn't have any numbers. If I say, yeah, 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 yeah I, no, I understand. Yeah, so, so on your view, an organism that has no, um, sorry, an organism that has. <clears throat> wait, hold on. Let me ask you this: If you mm -hmm. have a number system that is organized around producing two different types of numbers, is that number system numberless? Uh, well, the thing about the, it's their relation to well, each other, I think. just answer the question first, before you get into any explanation like Oh, that. okay, yeah. all right. Um, so, it's, yeah. organi it's organized around two different groups of numbers. Is that numberless? No. Okay, cool. So, you're saying that an, an, a, uh, an, an, a thing that's organized around two different types of numbers is not numberless, um, and... If an organism is organized around two different types of sex, is is in fact sexless. So, what I'm asking right, but numbers are like the. I think the numbers would be wouldn't be comparable to sexes in the analogy. They'd be comparable to phenotypes. Um, I don't. I'm not understanding the the, the meaningful difference. Well, if um, well, let me just ask you this before. Like, do you yeah, think yeah. that if do you think that if we have a, a, two mutually exclusive um, instantiations, so we have a truly binary system, uh -huh. so we have, um, so for example, we can have, doesn't matter what it is, we could have zero or one, we could have a sperm or egg, we can have upspin and downspin of an electron in an orbital. Okay, yep, yep. Do you think that, do you think that the fact that there are two different exclusive um, instantiations means that the instantiation category that has both of them or the value that has both of them doesn't have that variable at all. Like it's just variable lists with respect to that binary bit system. So if, for example, if I asked you, let, you're from, an electron can have a upspin or a downspin, right? Okay. Yeah. So there could it's plus a month. Well, I, I don't know enough about I don't know enough about electrons oh, probably okay. for this metaphor to work. Um, gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. So let me let me do it like this. Let's say let's say we have these golf balls, right? I'll post in the general. Chat. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I'll bring that up. I, okay. I wasn't looking. So I we see a red golf ball, a yellow golf ball, and a golf ball that is both red and yellow, right? Uh, yep, yeah, sorry, just one sec, I'm trying to bring up the, the chat. Your general so, chat? So general text chat? Yeah. Yeah, and then scroll do you, right do you right see right the, the golf? Top. Do you see the golf balls? Not to the top, to the bottom. Ah, uh, that would be why I'm having problems. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, uh, why is it not working? Okay. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, okay, you got golf balls, okay. yep. Yeah. yeah. So we agree that the golf, the red golf ball, that's a golf ball. Let's say it's organized around reflecting a red color. It's, it's uh -huh. organized around being a red color. The yellow golf ball is organized around being a yellow color. Yeah. The yeah. third type of golf ball is both red and yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming that the color categories are exclusive disjunctions, that there can only be either red or yellow. Would you yeah. categorize the third golf ball as colorless? Uh, if the only two choices were red or yellow, then it's neither red or yellow. I understand that, but that wasn't my question. 
My question was, would you categorize the last type of golf ball as not having a color? No. Great. So now my question is, if you have eggs and you have sperm and you have a phenotype that can be organized around production of eggs and a phenotype that can be organized around production of sperm and a phenotype that can be organized around the production of eggs and sperm. And you say that produce... So my question is why in that case would the phenotype that's organized around both the production of eggs and sperm, why is that sexless? Uh, be uh, because unlike um, red and yellow, which are uh, not kind of, I don't know, they have a, they have a, the sexes have a mutually exclusive kind of uh, relationship. I agree. Okay, that, we can do that, it with... That, that, that red and yellow don't. Yeah, we can do it with mutually exclusive ones. So, for example, we can use zeros and ones, right? So a yeah, zero but that's and a one... so abstract can... that I don't think that it, like... Um, okay, we can that, use... That. I mean, we can use... I mean, there are many... Well, I can help you walk you through it. Um, there's zero... The, the ones that are truly mutually... I mean, it works the same way. We can use mutually mm -hmm. exclusive examples. It's going to be the same reductio. So one mutually exclusive, exclusive example is going to be um, a, the spin of an electron after it's measured can only be up spin or down spin. Another one could be a, a zero or one. And this really isn't that abstract. Okay. You, can, you can imagine that a number, you can imagine that a given number is, can't be a zero or a one at the same time. That's mutual, like it's just a contradiction of what it means to be a uh -huh. zero or a one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say I had a, you know, let's say I had a paper that's organized around just producing zeros and you see the paper and there's just zeros. Okay. Then I have another paper that just has ones, right? Uh-huh. Okay. We agree that the paper that just has zeros has a number category. It's yeah. organized around producing the number zero. We agree yeah. that the second paper is organized around producing ones and it has a number category. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. is the paper, now let's say we have a paper with a bunch of ones and zeros organized yeah. around one zero. Would you say that that paper is numberless? Uh, if there were only two numbers. Which there are in this case. And it has no, not that it has no number, not that it's numberless in that, like, in the sense that it has no numbers, but it's numberless in the sense that the category of pe like the category of paper that it is isn't defined by one or zero. Well, I understand that. Like the I mean, phenotype again, not, that it possesses. I'm, I understand that. Yo, know, I get that. So, like, let's say I understand that I can have a consistent definition schema such that I say uh, a number category. What I mean by a number category is that. It's either um, one only or zero only. Mm -hmm. And if something has a zeros and ones, if it's organized around zeros and ones, it's just by my definition, not, d not numberless. It's just because I'm defining numbers in such a the way I, I'm defining numbers is proprietary. And it's proprietary such that what it means to have a number category is to either have one only or zero only. Mm -hmm. And if you have zero and one, that's just not part of the number category. Mm -hmm. It's numberless. Now you would immediately see how this is a ridiculous definition, even if it doesn't contradict itself. You would immediately look at this in any other context, presumably, or if not everyone would, if you wouldn't. And see, wait a minute. No, that's, yeah, I mean, agree, you're not producing a contradiction by a definition, but clearly that third piece of paper is not numberless. And if it is numberless on your definition, it's just the ridiculous definition. Why would I ever use this? Um, so uh, or, would you disagree with that? Would you say, or would you say that actually, yeah, you know, that's, that's reasonable definition, you know, that. that because I'm not saying the paper doesn't have any numbers. on. I understand it. that. But All right. Also then, yeah, saying, yeah. Then, yeah. Then, 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 like, yeah. I think, uh, I think, you know, I think it makes sense. I think it's. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't think that's ridiculous. 
I think okay, it, so it sounds ridiculous that. because you misinterpret. No, I'm not uh, misinterpreting anything. What am I misinterpreting? That, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah uh, I don't think I've misinterpreted your view, but go ahead if you think I have. Um, I yeah. can reproduce. Can I reproduce your view, and not, you can tell me okay. if I have it right or wrong. Yep. Yep. Your view is that what it means to be um, a male sex is having a phenotype organized around the production of sperm only. What it means to be mm -hmm. a female sex is having a phenotype organized around the production of eggs only. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, since hermaphrodites are organized, are not organized around production of sperm only, and they are not organized around the production of eggs only, mm -hmm. they are not, they don't meet any of the, the sex categories, therefore mm -hmm. they don't have a sex category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Have I misunderstood your position? Yeah, so I guess the only thing would be to say that the um, the phenotype of the hermaphrodite doesn't have a sex category. That's what but I said. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, but in, in addition to that, the gonads of the phenotype do have a sex category. Oh, yeah, no, I, so, I, I, I agree right? with that. So no, the I numbers... That. The, so just to go back to the analogy with the um, pieces of paper... Yeah, I wasn't um, talking about the numbers. I was talking about the piece of paper, the third piece of paper. When I asked if it was, if it did, if it didn't have sure, um, sure, sure, sure. So yeah, it has numbers on it, but it's not defined by the numbers in the same way that the hermaphroditic phenotype has gonads in it. But because of the combina combination of gonads that it has, it's not defined by those gonads. Yeah, no. So I, I don't see how, what I misunderstood then. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay, cool. So you can have, so there's nothing about that definition that uh, I can, at least I can see that contradicts itself. Um, yep. The reductio would just be that there, like I said, there are individuals that are, orga there will be organi organisms that are organized around a mode of sexual reproduction, um, yep, yep. which on your view doesn't have a sex category, just like there are papers yep. Uh, there, there are pages of paper organized around displaying number combinations that mm -hmm. don't ha that wouldn't have a number category. Yep, Just yep. like there are golf balls that are organized around having uh, a color schema, a, a color combination that, on your view, wouldn't have a mm -hmm. color category. Mm -hmm. but, and we because, be, yeah. but because colors aren't mutually exclusive. You could say something like that is a... Well, we can um, just define it to be... That's fine. We could define it to be mutually exclusive. I mean, that right. wouldn't be a problem either. Like, we can just say that... I can say... Oh, I can, yeah, yeah, what you're yep, doing yep. What you're doing is... I mean, it's... Yeah, you can just analytically define it to be. So I can just say okay, that okay. the... the um, that anything... Um, that, that if something is red and something is yellow, it cannot be both red and yellow at this... At the, uh, in other words, the same, you couldn't have a color that's red-yellow. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. But you can have a ball that's red and yellow. Right. See what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you would say in this, in this case, as an analogy, that the golf ball that is both red and yellow doesn't have a color category. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so this, yeah, this is a good, um, would be a good analogy. So it would just be... If by colorless we just mean it doesn't have a color category, we would just say something like this, that there's yellow balls and red balls, and in that overlap, we just have this colorless category, where the ball that is red and yellow is, that does not have a color category. Mm hmm Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, it seems to be making sense, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I mean, I'm sure we could continue to give examples of reductios here, but it seems to me that you would, you would just bite the, the bullet. Yeah, I'm happy like, being you just, absurd. <laughs> you, would just, you would just bite the bullet and say that, you know, there's, yeah. I mean, what I would just say is that I, I'll just post, um, if anyone cares, if you do care about the way, because you did post the dictionary definition, so it seems like you may uh -huh. have some caring about um, the definition of what people consider 
uh, to be what a, a word means. Yeah, if you have like a medical. Yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah peer reviewed yeah. in biology. So, so one example cool. would be. Um, here's a peer reviewed publication that says the quantification of sexual selection is less clear cut in simultaneous hermaphrodites because each individual is both male and female at the same time. Notice how they're not mm -hmm. talking about the, yeah, they're talking about the individual. Um, yeah. here's another peer reviewed publication. Um, so this is a quote, which is to say, in contrast, simultaneous hermaphrodites cannot resolve these conflicts so easily because each individual is both male and female at the same time. Um, uh -huh. So, and then we can have more. So let me get more examples. Um, here is a di here is the uh, a publication. Well, here is, here's, hold on, let me pull it. I'll post this one. And I'll post the relevant screenshot for the definitions in this and how things are being defined in science classrooms. Here is that example. Notice how hermaphrodite is defined the definition an individual that is both male and female. Uh huh. Okay, here's another one. Hermaph this is in, um, here we go. Let's post this one. So both in the one last one, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this one, hermaphrodite organism is both male and female and has both types of sex organs. So they're talking about the, the phenotype, they're talking about the organism. Mm -hmm. So both in the peer reviewed uh, literature and in how it's taught in classrooms, hermaphrodites are considered, or hermaphrodite individuals, hermaphrodite organisms are considered to be uh, both male and female. So to whatever degree that you do care about how things are defined, and it seems like you don't, but to whatever degree that you may, <laughs> um, to whatever degree that you yeah. should know that this is a very proprietary definition that has, sure. number one, it has the reductios of saying that, um, you know, things like golf balls that have two colors that w even if the colors are mutually exclusive, the golf ball doesn't have a color category. Um, if pages, you know, if pages don't, uh, if pages have zeros and ones, then the pages doesn't, the pages doesn't have a number category. Um, the, the program spitting out. Yeah, I mean, it's just, we could come up with more uh, examples. I mean, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should think of the other reductios that this might have. Um, oh, let's do it like this. Let's say, so let's say we have in, let's say we have a orbital that has um, an elect, so let's say like this. Um, doo -doo -doo. So we have a example of an electron that has an upspin and an electron that has a downspin. So electrons can have um, angular, a spin of an electron is intrinsic property of its angular momentum. Okay. Um, electrons can have an upspin, which is plus one half. Electrons can have a downspin being minus one half. So we could have an electron with an upspin and a downspin. My position would be saying that it has no spin. Are you saying that it would be it wouldn't have a spin category? It would be spinless. Yeah, well, that's the difference. You're saying like there's a difference between saying it doesn't have a spin, like doesn't have a category, and that it doesn't have um, uh, any like property, like any sex properties, I guess. Um, so, like we say with the golf ball, obviously the red and yellow golf ball is red and yellow, but it, but but it doesn't fit into either of the red or yet like the pre. It doesn't fit into categories. specifically. No, no, I understand. It doesn't. Sorry, I understand yeah. that it wouldn't so, yeah, fit yeah. into the red only or yellow only category. I I, I get that. Um, the I'm, again, I'm not trying to say that your definition has a contradiction or is incoherent. I agree mm -hmm. that it's just that if I if we were to present this type of definition in any other context, it would just be laughed at. And th it wouldn't be laughed at because it would contain a contradiction. It would be laughed at because it clearly doesn't capture what we're trying to mean when we use the words that we're using. It would, yeah. so I can say, I can clearly say that, well, I, let I me mean, when I, when I say color, I clearly mean red only or yellow only category. 
And because this has both red and yellow categories, on my view, mm. it doesn't have a color category. And that's mm -hmm. true. It's clearly true. But if I were to present this anywhere, I would just be laughed out of the room. Uh, the but it reason... depends. It depends. It depends on whether, like, why would you be laughed out of the room? Yeah, the reason I would be laughed out of the room is because clearly I'm not capturing. Um, I'm clearly not capturing what people uh, would mean or what is used in the scientific literature. If I would were be presenting this at an academic conference, or sure. Something. But it's the same thing with like you know, alive and um, uh. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same thing with that. I see where this, that's going now. Because um, yeah. why, why, why wouldn't it be? Yeah, like, because like if, if there we, was... Yeah, if, 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 if there the was, organism yeah. was alive and dead at the same time? Are you just, is that no, what no, no. Why, why, why doesn't the presence of... Um, like an inert thing isn't alive or dead, well, but, the existence, but the existence of an inert thing doesn't destroy the... Um, yeah, because it does, it, doesn't make the doesn't make the proposition that, that alive and dead are a binary. Yeah, yeah. Um, because no, I can answer. I can answer that because that mm -hmm. is, would be an example of something truly out of the. So look, so the the reason for that is because it's not being generated out of something that is both alive and dead, right? So right. What so you need a analogy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If something yeah. was both alive and dead. Um, we mm. would say that that is both alive and dead. We would say that it, it, it has this category. Um, mm. it's, it, that's not the same thing as just saying something that, is, that isn't part of the category schema because it has both properties. It's just out of the category schema because it, has, it genuinely has neither property. So if you found something that mm. is genuinely... Well, actually, cold, then, then how, how about the position stays uh, somehow? <laughs> but the... Um... Maybe maybe it's male and f ah shit, male and mm. female and doesn't have a doesn't have a sex category. Well, but, that's um, a contradiction. That, that's part. hilarious. But what I what I'd like to understand is from Avi, like why why is it that we're having a debate around if this guy can create some proprietary definition by which he can say that there's only male and female? Surely the discussion should be about if sex, as used in the scientific literature, um, is binary or not, oh, right? Then it's of course, clear. Of then course he can start case. talking. Of course, he can start talking about schmecks and then say schmecks has whatever properties he wants. He's just creating a word at that. Point. Does oh, he yeah, yeah, yeah. That, does he grant that the word, as used by the scientific community, clearly refers to something that is um, not binary? I think he has granted that. Uh... Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I yeah, I I don't have enough. Yeah, yeah. So so your position is the thing that everyone else is talking about, and that we're taught about in schools, and that the scientific community is talking about. That thing's not binary. I just have a special definition that no one else is using about something that is binary. That's the view, right? Yeah, that sounds kind of stupid when you say it like that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. I guess um, I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand. Because um, imagine yeah. if we were debating whether whether one can be two at the same time or something. Let's just take some other some other topic, right? Or like mm -hmm. discussing if something can be like a lion and a shark at the same time, right? And it's like everyone. This is kind of the reverse case where at the everyone's going to say, no, it can't be both at the same time, right? But, you know, say that, you know, everyone who's ever learned what the words lion and shark mean, it's like they have a clear idea what they're talking about. The biological community has a clear definition of, you know, what those words mean. And then the position that you end up taking is like, well, sure, like, according to how literally everyone else is using the words, you can't have something that's a lion and a shark at the same time. I'm, I'm just using the words in my own special way where it can be both at the same time, right? Like, what's, right. what's the... I mean, you, I, guess, I guess you can do that if you want, but it just seems like, you know, it seems like you're not actually disagreeing with anything about Avi's position, right? It sounds like right. you're granting that all of the social justice warriors who you're arguing with, what they're saying is true. 
And you're just trying to salvage your position by going, well, if I mean something different than everyone else, then I can still be technically making sense. Like, if you just sure. rant, that's what you're doing, then, you know, fair enough. But it's just important to, like, fully seed, like, yes, like, the word <laughs> as, everyone, as everyone else on the planet is using it, uh, the scientific community is using it, etc. Yeah, it refers to something that's not binary. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess that, uh, well, hang on. Let me take a second. What's the show me one of these definitions? <laughs> well, oh. I just did, but we can go through. Yeah, them again. yeah, I can yeah, no, I... yeah. Oh, so here's one peer reviewed literature. Here's a peer reviewed source. Uh, here's here, I'll go it again. So, but, but see, also before you go through the definition, but like the fact that you, you are even asking shows that like this is something that you want to fight, right? Like you want to fight against the idea that what everyone else is talking about and what the scientists are talking about, you want to fight against the idea that that's not binary, right? It's like, you're not just concerned with defending that your proprietary definition is not binary. We can always make up a proprietary definition, something that has whatever features we want, as long as we're not committed to too many features before the fact that is such that it's logically impossible to craft a definition with certain properties. Right? Sure. That's sure. restricted from the get go. We can always create a word that has what we want, but the fact that you're sitting here interested in like, well, like do the, do, do the definitions out there that the scientists use really say that kind of thing. It shows like you're not just fighting for your ability to create a proprietary definition that somehow uh, is uh, binary, right? It's like, you want to argue clearly about, the word as everyone else is using it, unless I'm just misunderstanding you. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I, yeah. kind of like Mott and Bailey, right? Like, do you, are you like a right wing guy? Like, if you are, you probably. No. Oh, oh he's, a, he's a Marxist, I, I think. Oh, right? yeah. You're like, okay. Sorry. Yeah. True. Cause like, well, there's a lot of left-wingers who do Mott and Bailey stuff, which is why I, I was going to pick on the left for doing it. I could think of examples on the right if I sat here for a minute. But, you know, you talk to a leftist and they'll give you one of these, like, you know, ridiculous slogans, like, you know, Canada is like a white supremacist society or something like that. And you'll be like, well, that, that sounds incredibly stupid. No, it's not. What's the argument for that? And then the second you put pressure on it, it's like, well, you know, white people tend to have more like wealth on average or something like that. and it turns into these totally mundane like claims that no one would ever disagree with but the initial claim was something really extravagant right and it's like you kind of like, Mott and bailing is kind of like it's kind of bad form right like it's not it seems kind of silly to throw well I did, uh, yeah i mean i i didn't so much feel like i was um inventing uh my own proprietary definition i was working from the dictionary de definition of uh yeah no no, no. And if, if you if you want to defend that that the word you know as as used commonly or as used by the scientists or some, something like that is binary then that's that's like interesting discussion but it's like it's the like not being able to defend that and then somehow ending up in this position where you're just defending that you can create a word that's um that's binary it's like that's that's when like avi basically got the win, but somehow the debate kept going into some other topic, and it didn't get acknowledged that the first topic just got like shut down, right? So, I don't know. I think you'd want to just either. Hey, hey. Sorry. Sorry. What's so? Sorry. What was the difference? Like, because the um, difference of the two topics there that would be debated. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Um, I said that I was arguing from the dictionary definition. And then you said, well, that would have been fine. But then you started doing something else at some point. I, don't, I didn't notice when I switched. No, I'm, I'm saying if that is the case, that that's happening, that's a, it's kind of like, it's like, the, it's silly in the same way as getting Mott and Bailey is silly, right? Like, say that you cut, like, obviously, when Avi's criticizing this idea that sex is binary, he doesn't know what your fucking proprietary definition is. So clearly does, that's- Does he know what the dictionary definition is? Like- why I, would he assume? Yeah. Know, but can I just complete my point? I was just saying, obviously, when he's out there making these claims, he's not thinking about what proprietary definitions people he's never spoken to might have, right? Like before his first debate with you, he didn't know what definition you're using. He's clearly talking about some other definition, like the definition that's out there that everyone else is using, right? So, well, he like, did, he did not, he did know what I was, he did know what I, 
he did know what I was talking about because he'd like watched a whole video. Well, I don't know. He'd watched a video of mine and responded to me and just said, clear, I want to discuss you. So he knew where I was coming from beforehand. I didn't well, like, just, to, like just to be clear. I'm interested uh, when I, t when I'm speaking about a scientific subject, um, I'm speaking, uh, I'm interested in the way scientists are using the word, the de the def how these words are defined in the scientific community. Like I under, just like if I was talking about a philosophical definition, I would be interested in the way philosoph philosophers are using that word. If I'm talking about a legal definition, I would be interested in the way lawyers are defining that word, right? I wouldn't be very interested in the way like a lay person definition would be using that word because, um, that's not something that interests me. I'm not using that word in the same way that the experts in the field are using that word. Well, mm -hmm. and just imagine imagine a discussion where, you know, I, I say that, like, you know, um, a chair can be, you know, composed of, like, I don't know, of... You could say say that I'm... Oh, what's, a, what's a common word? Like, well, chair is pretty common. Uh, say, say that I'm, like using chair to mean star right and i'm saying chairs can have like features of stars like you can have a chair that like it doesn't have legs it can't be sat on it's just you know the uh mm -hmm. like the size yeah but of that's what i feel oh, like I, that's what i feel like is happening with your argument where you're essentially a where you're well, essentially I, ca calling a phenotype a sex well, just just wait wait a second but all, all I, okay well sorry you, th you threw me off my train of thought sorry <laughs> no, it's, sorry it's fine it's it's just It'd be it'd be kind of like all I'm trying to get across is it's silly to like no one's gonna debate that you can create unless unless it's like logic. Yeah, yeah, that you can create words, but that's exactly what Avi's doing when he's saying that. But, but wait, before talking about whether it's yeah. what he's before talking about whether it's what he's doing or or something like this, right? Like, mm -hmm. is the debate about whether you can create a word that has this feature of being binary or is the debate about whether the language as used by scientists is referring to something binary. Right. Because um, if it, it's like it starts I it's, first, I, I, and I, I, then when the first can't be defended, it, it, like, the debate can just like, sure, turn sure, it into the sure. second, right? Without a concession. Basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm not saying right. that's what did happen. I'm saying kind of seems like that, because I doubt Avi would have gone into a debate about a proprietary definition right it seems, it seems weird yeah 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 um i mean yeah which I, which is it about i guess yeah uh i guess um because the other th sorry one other thing because the other thing he'll do is maybe you'll try to i bet this happened too actually it's probably led to some confusion like if you give a proprietary definition that happens to not work, which it sounds like you did a bunch of times and you found your, your way to one that actually is binary, he's going to go, well, no, even by your standard, that, that still is not something that's binary, right? But that's, that's like the debate slowly migrating away from the initial topic, right? And then it starts mm. saying, can you craft a word that works, mm. right? But yeah. yeah, the original yeah. topic, though, do you, do you grant that or are you still debating about whether the word as used by scientists refers to something binary? Uh, I think that, uh, sorry, the word refu uh, does it refer to something binary? I still think that it does refer to something binary. Um, and by I do, it, in the word, like, as it would be taught in a biology class, as you'll find it defined in biology textbooks, etc. Yeah, yeah, I think that sex would be binary. Um... The I, Do you yeah, agree with I that just, often? no, I think that actually entails a contradiction. So that that debate should happen instead of it sliding into a debate about if you can create the word, right? Because he's he's going to give you some trouble if you give definitions that don't work, but he's not going to deny that you can make your way to one eventually. I'm sure that's a fair sure. statement of your position, right, Avi? Yeah. So I mean, I I have provided uh, four examples at least um, where either in the peer reviewed literature. Um, in the peer-reviewed biology literature, hermaphrodites or hermaphrodite organisms are referred to as being both male and female at the same time. I've also right. provided textbooks and and uh, and uh, curriculums in as it's taught in science schools, uh, actually straight up defining hermaphrodites as organisms that are both male and female at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if that's the case, then it's actually a contradiction to say that the sex category is um, binary. 
It actually entails a logical, that does entail a logical contradiction. Sex category, but the, it's the, isn't that the phenotype category? The, the, the category, category, or, the, the, the category of sex as it Sorry. refers to an organism. So, or an individual. Same thing isn't really meaningfully different. Yeah, sex as it refers to an individual. So, for example, we have a category that is this individual. Yeah, but that's a pheno. That's a pheno. What, what you're talking about is a phenotype, not a sex. I'm talking about the sex category of a given phenotype. Right. Okay. And then, as it that's used in the scientific literature, that is mm -hmm. that to say that is binary entails a contradiction. Yeah, I think that they. Okay, <laughs> I think that potential. Yeah, I mean, as I say, like I got no uh, scientific knowledge. I'm just like discussing because I'm finding it fun. If it's not fun, then don't. Um, then you know we've been talking for a while. You've spent a lot of time. Uh, it's been a good discussion. Um, but I guess that it probably would make more sense to say they're male and female. Um. Well, here's see. Here's the problem. Once you grant that, once you're saying that, um their sex category can be male and female, you've entailed that there is a third sex category. And once you do that, it's a logical contradiction for a category to be binary. Right, but that's the that's that's a category of phenotype, not a mm -hmm. category of sex. It's a it's a sex category of an organism, or it's a sex category of a phenotype. But like, let me put it to you this way. Yeah, yeah no, 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 this is what you do. This is what you do. I actually noticed this in the um, in the uh, Twitter discussion was that, that you you substitute the phrase sex for sex with respect to an organism, mm -hmm. which actually means phenotype. Sex um, with respect so, to phenotype. So then you get to argue that the phenotype um, is a sex because you're not calling no, it a phenotype. Not, yes, you're no, calling it no, sex with no, respect to nope, organism. Nope, nope. I'm not saying that the that a phenotype is a sex. I'm saying it has a sex. It has a sex category. That's not the same thing as saying yeah, it has a sex a category. Yeah, just like for example, the golf balls. The golf balls that you saw before. I'm saying mm -hmm. that they have a color category. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the golf ball is a color. I'm saying that the golf ball has a color category. The same way a phenotype can have a sex category. Mm -mm. I don't. A I don't understand why a phenotype can't create a sex category. I don't I'm understand why the created, word. I'm saying it has it. Wait, but the the part the inference that Avi made that you objected to had nothing to do with like phenotype, right? Like when he said, if you grant that you can have an individual who's male and female, then you're granting that male and female is not a binary category scheme. I don't know what the fuck phenotype, how that managed to come in here. That's just a direct... Because, because well, well, wait, wait a sec, but if something, if something does not fit strictly into two categories, that thing is not binary. You agree with that, right? It's premise one. Sure. Premise two, male and female, doesn't fit strictly into one or two, uh, into two categories, right? It fits into male and female. It's the two existing categories. Yeah, but it's, it's not always in one or the other mode, right? You just granted that there's someone who would be in both modes. There's a f yeah, there's a phenotype that can, can contain both gonads. Wait, I don't know why the word phenotype is coming up. Do you grant that there are individuals who are male and female? There are That's individuals... There ago. are... In uh, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah um yeah but there are individuals that are male and female um sure yeah well, okay. no 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 well that that there there are indiv that, yeah there are individuals that contain both male and female gonads okay but are you granting that they're male and female or not because the point avi made is once you grant that there are individuals who are male and female then you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to fight the claim that sex is um not binary, right? Like you have to fight him on that. If you like, you can't. Right, 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 right. But, but, but the sex, the everything. sex, the sex, the sex, the sex, sexes are still binary, but the phenotype is not. No, I'm asking: Is there the word phenotype is not being used anywhere here by me? I'm asking: it, Can you have an individual who's male and female? Uh. 
Ooh. Yes. Okay. Now, if someone can be male and female, right, then sex isn't binary. Right? We could set it up like a, a formal inference. Yeah, yeah, valid, yeah, yeah, yeah. If so logic, right? You could, you could set it up in first order logic and it'll be valid. Yeah, uh, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. First premise would just be if someone can occupy two categories in a category scheme, the scheme isn't binary. Someone can occupy the categories male and female in the sex category scheme. Therefore, sex isn't binary. It's going to be a formally valid argument. You could just prove that in first order. Yeah, logic. yeah, you, yeah. You yeah. have to fight one of those premises if you don't want to grant the conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, okay, cool. I guess I'm back to where I was at the beginning. <laughs> uh, defeated yet again. Um, uh, cool. Well, um, yeah, I guess that. Um, I don't know. I could make a m bunch of guesses and and um, uh, things like that, but I don't think. I think I'm going to need to take a break and uh, think it over. Yeah. Um, well, instead of instead of trying to trying to like find a way to prove the position, because we none of us want to be like the you know like classic like picture some like religious motivated reasoner like no matter how many times you debunk the argument, they're just going to come back with some new argument for for their religion, right? It's like probably don't want to get like this is this isn't so. this isn't part of this isn't like i mean i didn't really understand the debate well enough uh, obviously <laughs> coming into it um but i uh and like a lot of people who agree with me like most of the people who agree with me in terms of like sex being a binary um were telling me uh that no one else made this argument that like a hermaphrodite has no sex category. I just thought that it was kind of a idea that I came up with <laughs> in, in the in the space well, between. You can, you and can, thought you that can, would you can do that though. You just at that point, if you're using your own definitions, you're going to be able to say they don't have a sex. But once you go down that road, then you're off of the pathway of defending the original claim, sure. which is that the sure. word that's used by scientists refers to something that's binary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Obviously, he's going to grant all that. He might give you a bit of pushback if you say something that that's like incoherent, but he's not going to deny that you can reach a definition that's going to be binary. That, that, but that's not the debate whether you can craft a definition that's binary. Right. The debate is about if you if the word as used by the scientific community refers to something binary, and yeah. if you grant that inference, right? If you grant the first premise that. A categorization scheme where uh, something can occupy two categories isn't binary, um, and that a person can occupy the two categories, male and female, in the sex category scheme. Right? Then you just get committed to the conclusion. It's just a for it's going to be a formally valid inference. You can prove that in first order logic. You're going to get committed to the conclusion. Oh, okay, binary. sure. I mean, I think also that. Um... This is this just goes for uh, it's probably not going to help, but this just goes for um, animal species that do have like like the, the sex in general. Like obviously, um, I don't think that there are any like um, truly hermaphroditic like human beings. Um, there's not, but that's a what is that? Yeah, that Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why that was. Wrong. Oh well, yeah, because uh, he's gonna he's gonna also say to you, it doesn't matter if they exist or not. You have to rule out the possibility. Yeah, yeah, possibility yeah, 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 yeah. In order, right? But yeah. it, not that not that he can't win the further argument too about whether they exist. Right? It's just it's yeah. just not necessary to win the original argument. So he's not. Oh, oh no, that. definitely he can't make the argument that um there's a uh that there's a that um humans have a hermaphroditic phenotype if he'd like to make that argument wait I wait no no that was different phrasing do you uh, so before wait let's not go down a way separate pathway but if you don't think that there are humans who are male and female right then i think I, I, wait wait you just granted that a minute ago what are you talking yeah 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 no 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 but there's a difference this is this is what i've uh it's been i guess part of the discussion um there's a difference between um, having a male or female phenotype that has true hermaphroditism and a hermaphroditic phenotype. Do you okay, understand the difference between I, that? I, I don't, but we I don't think that that's relevant to the first few points because like the first point is just about logic, right? It's like it's just going to go through if you grant those two premises. 
So I, what I was going to say is that there's probably a further debate to be had there because Avi can win the binary thing based on the possibility, the logical possibility of a third category, right? But there's a further question about whether any individuals actually exist who are in that category. And mm -hmm. I think you can win that debate too, but that's, I'm just saying that's like a further discussion. Yeah, and we would have to, but then it would also make a difference if, if we were to have that discussion about whether we're using the word, um, whether we're using our terms in the way his in his proprietary terminology, or if we're using it uh, in accord with the scientific terminology, because in the first discussion I had, um, I, one of the things I actually mentioned is that the phenotype he was discussing was um, not w w was sorry was a proprietary definition. But the reason I went through it anyway was just to show that even if well, I, I grant that there are no um, human individuals that met his proprietary definition, his proprietary definition still wouldn't result in a binary category. And that's, that was the result of our first discussion. Here's, mm -hmm. what, here's what I want to understand, though, because it's, I think it's fair to say that you're granting that the word as used by scientists isn't referring to something binary, right? We're not fighting about that anymore, or are you still trying to fight that? <laughs> uh, I think it's... Yeah, I still have... Issue. I have questions around that, but yeah, I'm, I'm not fighting it, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have questions, I guess you can raise them with Avi, but, the, but there's like this question that kind of comes up for you if you grant that, right? Like if you grant that the word as the scientists are using it refers to something that's not binary, well then, and if, if Avi grants that you can come up with some definition that refers to something that is binary... Then the question is just like, okay, well, wait, then you don't actually disagree. You don't actually think that there's anything that he's saying that's false. At that point, why are you committed to using that definition? It's like, why are you so attached to insisting that, you know, intersex people like don't have a sex or something? Why would you, why would you? I never, I never said intersex people don't have a sex. Well, no, yeah, you didn't say intersex people. Just to be, just to clarify, true. Uh, if there are people who are true simultaneous hermaphrod, hermaphrod, have true simultaneous hermaphroditism, you would say that they don't have a sex. All right, but no. the question is just if no, you... no, 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 no. That's the whole point about not understanding the difference. Oh, oh sorry, between sorry. Let, a me male and female let me let me put it this way. Sorry, just to be, uh, you're right. I, I would say that if there was a human individual that was organized around the production of both eggs and sperm, you would say that they don't have a sex. That they had a phenotype that yeah. was organized around, which, which is subtle, subtly different. Like, sure. if they um, had a um, phenotype. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, if they had yeah. a phenotype. Like, if, if there, there was actually okay, a, a way to a way to phrase it the most clearly is if there was a third human phenotype that was organized around the production of both eggs and sperm, then that person, yeah, I would say doesn't have yeah, a sex. That person doesn't. You would say that person doesn't have a sex. Yeah. So I, I guess my question is just that if you grant that obvious everything he's saying is correct, right? What why is it that you want to insist on using that particular proprietary definition where you say they're sexless? What's the motivation for that? Uh, I'm wh where I say that. Ah, oh, uh, what's the motivation for? Ah, uh, just that I thought it was true. <laughs> just that I think it's true. Um, well, well, wait, but we all know now no one's disagreeing about what's true, except for your few further questions, which you might ask at some point. He's, you're granting what Avi's saying. He's granting that you can come up with a definition that's, um, that's uh, going to be binary. But the question is, okay, if we can both come up with these logically consistent definitions, and there's this one that everyone's using, and then there's this proprietary one that I can use if I want to, I'm asking, why select that one, right? And saying it's because it's true. Well, that, I mean, right. oh, okay, yeah, 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 no, no, I understand. Definitions um, don't have properties like truth, but there's nothing yeah. obvious saying that's false right? false, right? So it's like the idea that it allows you to say something true wouldn't be a basis for choosing it over the other definitions. Okay, right? well, you have to understand this one. It's important to understand that definitions don't have, to say the definition is truth is Yeah, truth. yeah, 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 no, I know that was, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Those definitions don't have truth values. The only thing, they, they could be incoherent. You can have a definition that's incoherent. But it, they don't have a truth value, right? But yeah, oh, what, what's yeah. the motivation then for for using that definition? Like, why are you why are you so committed to using that definition? I'm just curious. I don't understand it. Uh, partially because originally the debate that I 
um, got into was whether or not, not sex was a spectrum. Um, and uh, yeah, I made a video in response to that. And um, then I was just looking for people to debate on the idea whether sex was a spectrum, which I think is a much easier thing to kind of refute. Um, Avi commented on one of my videos and I went, oh, wicked, awesome, a person who wants to discuss, like who wants to debate whether sex is a spectrum. And he admittedly did say, actually, I don't think sex is a spectrum. I just think it's not a binary. And I didn't really like think about that enough, but it was just like, oh, wicked, <laughs> like someone to, yeah, uh, hash this out with. And yeah, then I got into the first discussion and realized arguing that sex is not a spectrum is much different to arguing that sex is definitely a binary. And um, yeah, then I sort of just went, uh, yeah, I don't know, wanted to have a couple of turns to see, um, like, uh, get my bearings and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was the motivation. I was, I was never meant to be here, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, or, well, I, I guess... I so yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, well, there's that question about the spectrum. Like, I, I don't know you that you I, you could discuss that. But yeah, of course, there's a distinction between. It's not a dichotomy to say something is either binary or or a spectrum, right? You can just have like a middle ground, like it's just ternary or something. There's still like distinct categories, but there's more than two. So yeah, whatever. But yeah. the the what I'm just trying to understand is now that you realize you don't actually disagree with anything Avi is saying, why do you still insist on using the word? Because like. I saw, um, I mean, you, you seem nice enough, but I saw some of your videos and you also do stuff like with trans people. You insist on calling them like he, if it's like a trans woman or whatever, right? So my question uh -huh. is just, if if nothing is false about the, if, if there's, if it's not going to be the case that you're making false statements, if you use the language, right? It's like, why, why the insistence on using the language is going to be like hurtful to people? Right, that's what I'm getting at. Ah, oh, ah, oh, okay. Well, this is a completely different question then. Um, it's a very okay. similar so, question. It's 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 still the the fundamental yeah. idea of the well, the fundamental idea of the question is like, why if there's not any kind of problem with the other language scheme, are you insisting on using yours? All I added in in that oh, last okay. reason was that yours uh, hurts people. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, they're two. At least because you're questions. sitting there going, well, there's two completely correct things I can say, but I'm going to insist on saying the one that will hurt people. It's like, why? What's oh, the point oh, of that? No, 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 no. Um, there's only like in the um, I mean, in terms of my opinion, like my opinion on whether sex is a is whatever isn't gonna it doesn't do anything. I like have a small YouTube channel. I you know that's not gonna have any matter. Pack. In I terms of, it. I'm just asking, even if it's just you personally, I'm just asking why the why that decision, right? Okay, I'm giving you well, the benefit in, of the doubt. You don't seem sure. Sure, sure. In like terms asshole, of the sex just... question, in, in terms of the sex question, I'm just exploring it and I'm trying to um, learn more about it. And uh, I am doing that as through talking to people who disagree with me, um, in order to uh, yeah work out where I'm wrong because. Um, yeah, I am sort of, you know, I get like, it's fun to make your own videos and have people who already agree with you go, yeah, that's a great point. But it's also good to, you know, get in there and have someone um, show you that you're wrong. Um, in terms of the, uh, like, gendering question, um, yeah, that's a whole separate, like, political debate, I guess. And I wouldn't, I would argue that it's not, um, it's not like one thing hurts people and one thing doesn't. I think they both have different kind of political impacts. Um, and it would be, yeah, a whole bunch, a whole, a huge discussion to get into. Um, yeah. So with this, with the sex one though, if there's nothing wrong with the language Avi's using, why do you insist on using this other language scheme? It's also not uh, what the science sure. community. Um, like what's, what's the reason for that? Why not? Why not just say, okay, well, actually, if there's no problem with the other language scheme, you know, fuck it, I'll just use the language that all the scientists are using. Why not do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I might. <laughs> okay, fair, fair uh, enough. That, yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah it was, I, it yeah. was just like, like I said, like I said, it was just kind of like I got into the first debate. Um, yeah, kind of through my own own fault, not really like reading what I was discussing uh, properly, and then I just kind of. Um, uh, yeah, felt dissatisfied with how the first one went and um, feel like I understand the issue a lot better now, even though I'm sort of like, I understand why I'm wrong better, I guess. <laughs> um, 
Oh, no, yeah, I don't, so think, I, you, I I don't think you are necessarily wrong, though. If you're if you're just going to define a term, it's not going to it's not necessarily going to be that you're saying anything wrong. But right. yeah, I guess I so I don't I don't want to take it into a whole different arena. But I, I do have the same kind of question with the language around trans people because right? it's like if in the case of sex, you're like, well, both language schemes make sense, and actually, you know, this one's kind of used by everyone. It's what the scientists are using. Maybe I'll use that. It's like okay, mm -hmm. fair enough, but then in the context of gender, there's like resistance to that and there's insistence on using the language that's going to like, you know, cause suffering, right? Even when both schemes work. So uh, look, I won't, I won't like take the debate there because, you know, whatever, but it's just, yeah. It's I mean, if you wanted to another time, who, who, like who, what, I don't really know who I'm talking to at the moment. Oh, um, uh, my name's Isaac. Oh, hey, Isaac. Um, yeah. 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 We could do it. Some, we could, uh, if you want, send me a DM or something and we could uh, hash that out another time. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Good talking Thanks, to you. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really good too. I think you um, spotted a lot of the flaws in the discussion. Helped kind of pull it back on uh, the rails. That was good. Yeah. Thanks, Isaac. He does that a lot. That's good. Yeah. Uh, All right, cool. cool. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Awesome. So. So, and if you want to, uh, uh, like, as I mentioned before, if you at any point uh, want to have another discussion, just DM me, hit me up, sure, and sure. Uh, we can hash it out again if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'll, uh, yeah, thanks for that. I'll uh, catch you soon. Have a good day. Yeah, like, we ha have, like, a, for some people, we have a counter, like, how many times are they going to come back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, all right cool, cool. let's, let's all see right. if, let's see if you hit three all right yeah yeah all, all right, right see ya, see ya. Bye. Bye.